create this absolute nonsense. Oh my god. There you go, internet. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Today I'm going to show you some basic metahuman posing tips, tools, tricks, etc. If you're watching this video, I just want to let you know that I did do a YouTube collaboration with my friend over at Grayscale Gorilla, and this is kind of like a follow-up video to show people some of the basics of getting started with metahumans in case you needed a refresher or you're just getting started with Unreal for the very first time. So with that being said, let's just get straight into it. I have this very simple scene of a metahuman, and I have a photo psych backdrop and a paper backdrop. And in the lighting tutorial I did over with GSG, we basically were trying to create different looks across different levels sequences. Now if I go ahead and double click on any of these thumbnails we can see that my character is posed and she looks a lot happier and normal to be here rather than stuck in a prison of being controlled by a control rig and such. Which speaking of let's go ahead and learn a little bit about metahumans in general. So if you go to the quickly add to project menu up here, you'll go to Quixel Bridge and you will have to log into your Quixel Bridge account and you'll find the metahumans tab. Under MetaHuman, these are going to be all the presets that basically come with the Unreal Engine. We're using Unreal Engine 5.4, and I have some MetaHumans that I have made. So we can see here that these are the MetaHumans I've made. Hey, look, it's me. It's my MetaHuman down here. Now, if you want to make your own or adjust your own, you can go ahead and select one of these presets and then click on Start MetaHuman Creator. And this will open up a web browser where you can basically create a MetaHuman and design a MetaHuman under your own account. We're just going to use the one I have here. This character Peyton. I just hit the add button and then when you do that for the first time it's going to go ahead and add a metahuman folder in your Unreal project. We'll see it named here and you'll see this BP Peyton. I just clicked and dragged and dropped it in and if I go to my selection mode in the top left hand corner go to my outliner we can see here that I have the blueprint. Now, I'm going to go into my sequences folder. If you don't have this, just go ahead and make a folder and make a new sequence. I already have one already. We have this GSG thumbnail demo, the MetaHuman demo, and this is the level sequence we're working with. We don't have a camera and we don't have a MetaHuman in this scene. So first, let's go ahead and add our camera, click and drag this into my scene, and now we have a decently composed shot. We're gonna go to our camera, make sure that the camera focus is set, and we can see here that I have this camera focus object, and I will just drag this into my... It's a little blurry right now because the focus of our object is a little bit further away, so we can just either move that, but we're gonna be posing our character, so I'm not worried about the focus just yet. Now, Here's the fun part, here's the juicy part, the metahuman stuff. If I go ahead and select my metahuman blueprint, I click and drag and drop this into my sequencer. We can see here that automatically it brings us to our animation mode and it adds a control rig for our metahuman. Now, if you don't have this, you're gonna go to the plus sign here and you're gonna find the components. So you'll have the body and the face, it should be added. But under the body, you're gonna click on the plus here and there's gonna be a control rig. And under control rig, we're gonna see that we have these control rig classes and these are the control rigs. Now, if you don't see this, you can uncheck filter asset by skeleton, and then you'll see all the other control rigs that will live inside your MetaHuman project. Now, when you make a MetaHuman for the first time and you bring it into your project, it will probably fight back and say, you need to enable all these plugins. Just enable those plugins. It will make your life easier. So go ahead and do that. Hello, Future Jags here. I also need to add one more quick, a little addendum, and that is not all control rigs will work with all rigs in MetaHumans. So you'll see here under the body, we have this MetaHuman control rig. These MetaHuman control rigs are built to work with MetaHumans. When you go to the plus and find a control rig, you'll see some other options if you uncheck filter by skeleton, filter asset by skeleton, and you'll get all these other things, but it's actually not gonna work. This might actually just crash my Unreal. Uh, what is it doing? I don't even know what this is. But long story short, not all control rigs will work with all metahumans. So for this tutorial and just working with metahumans in general, you want to use the metahuman control rig and the face control board control rig. These are built for metahumans. Okay, back to past Jags. Now, with this, we already have our control rigs here, but if you don't have these, let's say that the face is not here. And if I select my MetaHuman in my viewport and I hit the G key, we can see that we have these controls, but we don't have anything for the face. So if 
we go to the plus track here, we go to control rig, go to control rig classes, and we need to find that face control board control rig. And when we do that, we're gonna get this on the right side. And this control rig here is basically gonna give us access to control the character's face uh, without having uh, some very smart person, way smarter than I, built this thing so we can do chaos like this. Amazing, sweet. So if you've seen Monster Factory before, I think we should obey the rule of no middle sliders. <laughs> now, before we get into actually posing the face for this character, what I do want to do is show you some of the the things that no one really talks about when it comes to the metahuman control rig. So I'm going to scroll up to the very top and I'm going to close the face. I'm going to go to the metahuman control rig. And under this metahuman control rig, there's this global control. Now, if I go ahead and leave my camera, we can see here that we have all these different little gizmos to uh, move around. Now the problem with this is that in character animation there's a control rig called IK and FK. And FK means that. I'm not doing that. Uh, IK is what you want. So these by default are FK control rigs. And if I go ahead and hit the control tilde key, if I rotate this arm under the FK, sure. But if I needed to make a significant change to this arm or hand, it would be an absolute nightmare because I have to go into every single joint down the chain and make those changes. It, it's just not a good way to work a lot of the time. There are certain cases where FK will work and you should use FK, but I'm leaving easy and uh, I don't want to use FK if I don't have to. So if you go under the control here, under the global control of our metahuman control rig, this only applies to metahumans and some unreal skeletons, otherwise you will have to make your own skeleton, but under the global control there's going to be this arm L FK IK switch and arm right FK IK switch. So if I go ahead and increase this so we can make sure we have our little switch. If I turn these boxes on, it's going to turn the circles from circles to cubes. And now if I hit the W key now, I can move this around and it's gonna fall, the, the rest of the arm is gonna follow. And this is gonna really help with animating our control rig. Because now I can go ahead and just move this into a spot. Let's say I wanted to have her like raise her hand, like, hi, I have a question. Hello, we have our uh, control rig that's pulling up our elbow. And it's just one, one object that we have to keyframe, which you can add a keyframe here, versus having to go to three different joints. So the first thing that you should learn about the control rig in MediHumans and just rigging in general is that IK control rigs are gonna be your best friend if you need to do significant changes to motion capture or a character rig in general. Now I'm gonna undo that and I'm just gonna put the this arm in something a little bit more natural. So let's say we're trying to do some sort of like photographic pose where we have this character like maybe slightly turned at the hips. Maybe she has her hand on her thigh and we can just bring that down and uh, not break her arm. But when you do character stuff, we will probably break some arms. Here in the, oh God, I selected, don't select all the fingers, select just that put this right here like so sure cool that works that works for me and i can hit g to see if that feels natural and maybe the elbow needs to come in just a little bit more so this little circle here is going to be your elbow so i can go ahead and move this in and out uh, maybe i'll bring it out just a little bit and i'll take this hand and i will just apply this to a spot that feels a little bit more natural. Maybe I just have it like hanging at her side and just have a slight bend. And for stuff like this, it's really, really important to get reference, like get posing reference for sure. Because if you don't get posing reference, you're gonna be like, why is my thing not look right? And it's just because you don't have what you think in your brain is not going to be as accurate as what real life reference will give you. So I'll just put that, put it there for now. Maybe that's a little bit too high. And then we'll take this shoulder and rotate this forward. A few moments later. So we have our 
character kind of pose with the body. And let's say I wanted to have the feet a little offset so I can just take these sliders and these are very conveniently already set up for IK. So we can just go ahead and put these into a spot. And that looks, yeah, I'd say that looks a little bit more natural. Sweet. So now we have the face. And let, let's just be real, again, reference is super important. And I'll be honest, there is a lot of sliders on this. Like, I'm gonna be completely real. It is hard to pose a face. And there may be a time in which it will end up being more efficient to just use like uh, use your phone and the facial motion capture stuff but anyways here's the control rig and here's how you would make adjustments so you would basically hold right click and get nice and close to this control rig and maybe you have your second camera angle up and to do that what you would do is click on the three hamburger dots up here go to layouts and go to two panes right here and now under this two pane view, we'll go to our perspective and then our camera. And then in this view, we'll click on the view, left click in this view, hit G to hide. So then in this right view, we can look at the rest of our uh, control rig and kind of just control things as best we can. This is the workflow I found that works most conveniently. And now we can take this, do, do some things with the face. Again, like I said earlier, no middle sliders and make some chaos. Now, here's the thing about working with this control rig. You will want to use the keyboard shortcut control tilde a lot because it will go to the local axis of whatever your object is. So now we can go ahead and move these sliders along their oriented axis. So now I can go ahead and just create this absolute nonsense. <laughs> <gasps> oh my god. Okay, go to the outliner. We'll take the camera and we'll punch this in just a little bit and then bring it up just a little higher. And now we have our character. And all these sliders are going to do different things. So what I do recommend you do is actually try and uh, play around with what they do best. But like this one, this one up here right between the eyes is going to control both eyes in sync which is exactly what we want. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Here, hold on. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs> oh God. Okay. Sorry. I couldn't help myself. All right. Now that I've collected myself, basically what I'm trying to say is you have access to a lot of different tools in Unreal to create pose characters you could very well animate this way but i do recommend motion capture and if you are doing metahuman motion capture you would use the metahuman control rig as a layered control rig on top of your motion capture to create the edits that you would need to do i'm gonna make a follow-up tutorial to that in general but i just wanted to get you started with the metahuman control rig in general and understand the IK stuff and the facial rig because no one really talks about it. It's right there and you kind of need to do it if you want to do like triple A animation. You need some sort of control rig and if you're using metahumans, this is, this is that. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you learned something, let me know in the comment section down below. Questions, comments, concerns, whatever else, comment section is down there for that as well and as always, Always, if you know it, say it with me. Eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight and you'll make some gains. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.